Hey everybody. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Um, good evening if this is evening for you and if you're in a different time zone or watching on another day. Good morning, afternoon. Um, welcome, welcome. I'm Zara Premchi. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I am the founder of My Pretty Inspirations. I'm from Markham, Ontario, Canada. And this is the my weekly Wednesday Facebook Live crafting show. So if this is your first time watching, welcome, and thank you so much for joining. And if this is not your first time watching, um, also welcome, and thank you so much. I really am grateful for all of you that tune in and hang out with me and uh, comment and show some love. Um, so it just uh, definitely makes my Wednesday evenings that much brighter. So as you're logging on, please do say hello and let me know where you're watching from. Let me know how you're doing and what you're up to. Um, I'm just gonna find this on my computer so that I can continue to see comments once I flip the camera down and start the crafting. Um, hi Maureen. I do love to hear from you guys and um, the last few weeks we've had more people watching and uh, a lot more engagement and chatter and commentary about the projects and which embellishments I should use and stuff and it's um it's just so much more fun for all of us so please do comment and tell me first I'll probably ask you more questions as we go through the evening um, but tell me first how you're doing I hope that you guys are all doing well is anybody doing any crafting this evening I forgot to turn off to put my phone on do not disturb so I'm getting notifications popping up on my phone but um, I should be able to focus um, so I hope you're doing well let me tell you what we're gonna be doing tonight I'm gonna be showing you two cards and I'm going to be using the same card sketch so if if you if you're a crafter you probably or a card maker you probably know what a card sketch is and if you would consider yourself maybe a beginner crafter a card sketch is essentially a layout so to me I find that to be the hardest part of getting a card started is figuring out the layout once I've got the layout I feel like the rest of the um, elements of the card can come together more easily for me so that is often if not always my starting point for um, making a card is I will look for a card sketch or a card layout that I love and then I will leverage that for my card and then I pick the product I'm going to use and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you the same layout and show you how it can be used with two totally different sets of products and we're going to be featuring um, products from our celebration brochure. So uh, celebration is an important and very exciting promotion of the year with Stampin Up and if you're not familiar with Stampin Up I am a consultant for Stampin Up and all the products that I use on my crafting projects are from Stampin Up and you can purchase them from my online store there's a link in the description um, and just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I have been a demonstrator for almost eight years and I would never have really considered myself the crafty type. Although now after doing this for eight years, I'm sure people would consider me crafty. I would consider myself crafty. Uh, but the first time I started stamping, I was invited to a card making class or a workshop by a friend of mine at work. And truthfully, I just wanted to go to have an evening out, um, just an escape from the day to day and just be able to socialize with friends. And then when I learned how easy it was to put a, put a card together using some stamps, ink, and paper, I was almost immediately hooked. I felt like it was a really good hobby for uh, my busy lifestyle at the time. I had two kids and then I had a third um, a couple of years later. So it was it, we had a very busy life and so I just loved how card making and paper crafting fit really easily into my life. When I first bought the starter kit, that's what, what it's called when you buy the starter kit and you become a demonstrator. When I first bought the starter kit, I had no intention of running a business or doing classes or doing Facebook Lives or any of those things. Um, but along my journey, I started to realize that I really liked sharing uh, stamping with others. So that kind of grew. I started doing a couple of classes here and there, and then that grew to doing larger events and more often and more frequent. Um, and to now, since the pandemic started, doing these weekly Facebook Lives, and I'm starting to upload things to YouTube and stuff because it's really quite incredible the people that I have been able to meet and connect with online um, doing it this way. So there are some people that I've never even actually met face to face 
face, but we communicate often um, over messenger and, and text and things like that. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to actually flip the camera down really, cool, really shortly because I want to get started with the crafting and I know it's a Wednesday evening and you guys probably have other things that you want to get done. So let me flip the camera down and then I will um, show you a couple of things and then we'll get started with the crafting. Please do say hello as you're jumping on. Hello, Wendy from Hamilton. Wendy, I used to go to school in Hamilton. I went to McMaster University and I spent um, seven years there. I did my undergrad and then I did my occupational therapy degree there. So Hamilton is something is a place that's very near and dear to my heart. So welcome, welcome everybody. Let me flip this down and we'll get started. Okay, let me just get this adjusted. Hopefully you can see everything. And if you have at any point just trouble viewing anything um, or you're not seeing the screen properly, let me know and I can adjust things. Hello, Denise from Winnipeg. Denise, you're my eyes and ears. So if things are not looking right or sounding right, you're gonna let me know, right? Okay, I don't know. I feel like I don't have enough um, surface area here, but we're going to try and make it work. Um, Denise, how's the weather in Winnipeg? It snowed a lot here yesterday in Ontario, um, and it was super cold today, but it's it's funny. I was just saying to my husband a couple of days ago, it's it's been a very um, dry winter. We haven't had very much snow at all. So um, anyway, let's get started. You guys probably want to see some crafting, right? You were just going to say. Um, okay, so here we go. So this, I always have this here on my screen, and for those of you that look at this and just see a bunch of letters, this here is my online store address, or actually my website. So you can go to zara.stampinup.net, and on there you'll find some different options. If you do want to check out the online store, there is a tab to click shop, and then there's a host code, and that this alphanumeric code, if you enter this in on checkout, then you're going to get some free gifts from me, okay? So if your order is $50 or more, you're going to get an embellishment. So I don't have it on me right now, but I can show you what it is. I have it a different one each month. And for the month of January, I'm doing these really cute resin hearts. And if you have the mini catalog, it's on page 55. I've used these a few times recently, but they are these cute little resin hearts. You get 150 pieces, they're adhesive. So you just peel and stick and um, you'll get those for free if your order is $50 or more. Um, you're also going to, if your order is 60 or more, you're also going to get to pick a free product from our Celebration brochure. This is a short promotion, okay? Usually Celebration is three months long, and this year it's only two months. So we are now at the end of January, which means you have one more month to take advantage of our Celebration promotion. Tonight I'm going to be showing you um, three different products from our Celebration brochure. So every Wednesday night I'm featuring some different Celebration products just so that you can see them in action and on project and decide if you like them or not. We'll be using the Paper Blooms Designer Series paper tonight. Again, if your order is 60 or more, you can get a full pack of this for free. It's 12 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. We're also going to be using the Darling Donkeys. I haven't used that yet on any of my Facebook Lives, so you'll get to see this cute little guy in action. Um, there's some other products that you can get for free. There's some different stamp set. There's this ombre paper. I'll show you the other one that we're going to be using tonight. It's the Flower and Field Designer Series Paper. They have beautiful papers in here. Normally our papers are about $16 a pack and so it's really awesome that you can get them for free. These are all exclusive products so you cannot actually purchase them out of the publication. You have to qualify for them so it's nice because you can order um, different crafting supplies and then get stuff for free from here. If you would like to receive a catalog, so if you don't already have a demonstrator or and would like a catalog, please do let me know. You can send me a message or comment below and I'll get in touch with you to get your address and put these in the mail to you, okay? Hello, Michelle Pereira. Hello, Barb. Andrea Stella. Hello, Janice. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Denise again. Oh, it's nice to see so many people on. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Okay. 
So let me tell you a little bit more about what you're going to get when you order with me. So I am part of two tutorial bundle groups and what that means is we each create a project every month and then we put together a tutorial for it which contains photos, measurements, supplies, um, instructions. And so what that does is it takes the guesswork out of the crafting for you. So whether you're a beginner or a casual or even an avid crafter, um, sometimes the mojo is just not flowing or sometimes you see a project and you're like, I love that. And so there's tons of inspiration in these tutorial bundles and so with any order that you place with me you're going to get this creative stampers tutorial bundle for free so this for this month it's different every month for this month we're actually featuring celebration project products so you'll actually get other um, projects featuring the darling donkeys or the flower and field designer series paper or the paper blooms um, so you'll get lots of inspiration and you can use that as a jumping off point or you can copy the projects entirely so you will get that if you place any size order with me if your order is $50 or more, in addition to getting the resin hearts for free, you're also going to get this all-star tutorial bundle. This is 12 video tutorials, and these are done by top performing demonstrators all over the world. So from Australia, New Zealand, UK, United States. And I say this because it's a super proud moment for me, but there's only one demonstrator in Canada that's in this uh, group, and that's me. So. I have the privilege of being able to create with this group and then I get to share the tutorials for free. If you are on my team, so if you've bought the starter kit with me and right now the starter kit is on a huge sale, um, you get these automatically for free. So all my team members get the tutorials for free, which is just another one of the perks of buying the starter kit. If you start to accrue a wish list and um, you're finding that it's getting really long, anywhere near $100, which is not hard to do with this amazing catalog, then you definitely want to do the starter kit deal. And I, I really want to dispel the myth because when people hear starter kit, it, they kind of envision that it's a kit of already predetermined supplies. That's not the case. Essentially, you get to choose whatever you want to put in that kit. So it's $165 in product. You'll also get a free paper pumpkin, which is an all-inclusive subscription crafting kit. And until February 28th, you're going to get five packs of designer series paper. Let me just quickly grab them. You need to see it to believe it, my friends. You will get five packs of this paper. Each of these packs of paper is valued at about, is um, just under $16. So if you do the math, this is $80 in paper that you're gonna get for free. So I did some quick math today. If you were to purchase a starter kit, you would essentially be getting a value of $337 and you pay only $135, no tax, no shipping. No obligation, you don't have to do any classes or workshops. Um, you don't have to sell anything, you don't have to buy anything, you can just enjoy a discount. You have a discount immediately after you purchase the starter kit. So if you're thinking about getting some crafting supplies, then the starter kit is definitely the way to go and I can tell you more about that. Are you guys ready to craft? Hello, Rita, Rana, Jen, Phoebe. Thank you so much for joining, ladies. Okay, let me show you this card that I think is so super cute. I talked earlier about how I was going to be showing you a layout that you can use on multiple cards. So this is actually the layout and I will share the measurements in the description. But it's so easy to do and you just need some designer series paper and you can use this with any stamp set that you have, like literally any stamp set, okay? So we are using the Darling Donkeys and as I mentioned, this is a free set that you can get from the Celebration brochure. It says here Celebration, which means you cannot purchase this, you can only get it for free and quite frankly, I would rather get it for free than purchase it. So let's get started on this card. I know the donkey is so, so cute and I love this one. I just feel like he looks so sweet and innocent. I love all of them, but just the look on his face, right? He's just so cute. So let's get started by stamping our donkey. We're gonna do some stamping and coloring. The coloring won't take too long. I contemplated doing it in advance, but I, um, I thought a shower would be probably more valuable for you guys. You didn't wanna see what I was looking like before, <laughs> before I showered. Okay, so let me just stamp this guy here. And then while I have my black ink open, I'm going to stamp this sentiment. I know, Rana, the paper is, I'm sure it's no surprise to you because it's got flowers all over it. Um, it's really one of my most favorite papers. Like if it was in the actual catalog, I would be buying, buying up a storm. 
Okay, so let's start coloring. So I'm using just three Stampin' Blends. So our Stampin' Blends are our alcohol-based markers and you can you buy them in combo packs. So I'm using dark and light gray granite. So I'm gonna start with the dark and I'll move this up here so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm just following the line on the actual image, okay? So I'm not, I'm not really like a good colorer or shader like I'm not an I'm not an artist okay like I just I just follow what the image tells me to do and where it tells me to go so I'm just kind of adding some of the dark I'm gonna do the dark on his tail as well wherever you think there would be kind of a shadow right if there was a light above his head where do you think the shadow would cast some darker um, tones on him I'm not using the right words Okay, so we've done that with the dark, and now I'm gonna go in with the light. I'm actually gonna use the brush tip. Okay, so I'm just, you wanna kind of go in when it's still a little bit damp, so you don't wanna kind of do your first layer and then leave and go get a coffee. I mean, I'm sure it would still work, but it's always good to do it when it's a little bit damp. I find it blends a little bit better that way, so you can see that there is some lighter parts in the middle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on his face here. And I'm just using the brush tip. I'm gonna actually leave part of his ears because I'm gonna go in with the ivory. All right, so just going in here. I should probably use the pointy tip here. sort of a skin color okay and then if you wanted to do some even more like create a little bit more contrast you could take your color lifter and just oh this one's a little bit drippy so I don't know it might not blend too nicely but it's kind of gonna it's not really like an eraser but it's just a little bit of a, a lifter so you can just do a little bit more lightening in certain spots okay I don't love the way that turned out but I can fix it there we go. All good. I think you guys get the picture, right? So what I've done is I've cut this out using a stitched square, and then I'm also using using my layering squares, okay? So these are um, some dies that I use very frequently, and I find that they're super versatile. So I'm just going to stick this down. I'm using my white stitched square, and I'm putting it on a black scallop square, which is just a little bit bigger. So you're not going to see too much of the scallop but it's uh, still gonna give it that layering effect. Oh yeah, Jen, it's, I, you know what, truthfully, I don't use the color lifter often enough probably. Um, I say it every single week that I'm a bit of a lazy crafter, so I just, I'm like, not, you know what, I don't even think it's that I'm lazy. I think I just often craft with not too much time on my hands, so I feel like I'm constantly crafting in a rush because, you know, I've got to, do something for my kids or go to bed or something. So I find, um, I just do, I do quick crafting. Okay, so let me tell you some dimensions here. So I'm using a regular top fold card base. This measures four and a quarter by 11 and it's scored at five and a half. I'm sorry, I should have written those dimensions down, but I will include them in the description, okay? And then I've got a layer of basic black cardstock, which measures three and three quarters by five inches. Okay, so I'm, I'm going um, half an inch short, uh, half an inch smaller than the front of my card. Then I've got two pieces of designer series paper. This measures three and a half by two and three quarters. You do not need to try and memorize any of this because I am going to <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the description. And then this one here measures um, two and three quarters by two inches, okay? So it's just uh, butting up against the edge of that and it's just creating this, you know, uh, layer on that um, cardstock. I'm having major word finding difficulties here. Um, thank you, yeah, I'm glad you like it. I, I really like doing a black mat because I just find it, it give, makes everything else pop. So I am now, okay, I have to tell you a funny story about my Tombow liquid glue. So 
my daughter um, is doing her online learning like in the basement. So I work down here like during the day when I'm doing my, my work work. I work down here and then she is doing her schooling. So today her teacher said, okay, you guys need to grab the following supplies. We're going to be doing art. So she needed glue and she needed um, paper and, you know, markers and things like that. So we couldn't find a glue stick in the house anywhere. And then we couldn't find any like regular liquid glue, like school glue. So I gave her my Tombow liquid glue. She's used it before. But I've told her, Amelia, you need just a tiny, tiny bit on your project. You do not need a lot. So I left her alone to do her stuff because I was working. And when I went to check on her, there was like white glue gushing out of the sides of everything that she had glued down. Like it was, it was a mess. I had to get a tissue and wipe away so much of the glue. And then I had, she had used, gone through like three of my half Tombow bottles. So luckily I had one left, otherwise I would have been using, on my sample, I had to use glue dots to put these down because I couldn't find any liquid glue and then luckily I found one just before I went live. You probably want to know what I'm doing with these strips. So these strips are four inches wide by a quarter of an inch, okay? So oftentimes I'll take one strip that's about half an inch wide and then I'll cover a seam. This time I used three strips, okay? So it's just adding like some pops of color here. And I'm just now going to put the black mat down on my card base and I'm using just Jade. So I really just pulled the colors from the designer series paper. So there's a just Jade background here. Then we've got some bumblebee and then there's some flirty flamingo. I'm not using any of the pink tones here. I'm just going to use the, um, the just Jade and the bumblebee. Okay. So let's get our dimensionals. I'm going to put four on the back of this, maybe five, so there's no sagging in the middle. And then peel them off. And then we'll stick this on about yay high. Okay, so, so that's almost our finished card. Now we just need to embellish. So I, because there's so much black and white going on here, I'm going to be using the Playful Pets Trim Combo Pack. I love this trim. So you guys hear me talk, you probably think like, oh my God, is she ever going to stop talking about white twine? Because I, I love Whisper White Twine. What I love as much as Whisper White Twine is black and white twine. So this um, combo pack is fabulous, but I will tell you, I have bought so many packs of the combo um, the trim combo pack and I have about six rolls of the red and not enough of the stripe So if anybody wants to do a Tracy with me on the um, the black and white one, I would happily give you I'll even give you two rolls for one of these <laughs> I've never done that before like negotiation on a Facebook live. So You heard it here first Okay so I'm taking that twine and I'm going to put that on, hang on, let's get some glue dots here. <laughs> okay, Jen, is it a thing? Like, okay, it must be a thing. It was like everywhere. The glue was everywhere. And, and then of course her fingers were stuck together because if you've ever used our Tombow liquid glue, you know this stuff sticks. It's not like regular school glue. Okay, so there's our little bow. I like to fray the edges a little bit on this. The, the twine. What I love about this twine is you can actually pull it apart. I'm going to show you something as soon as I've done this. So we don't have black twine, but if you wanted black twine, you could take your, um, this Playful Pets trim pack and you can actually separate the white from the black and you can have two separate twines if you wanted. So you just kind of twist and then you've got two different colors of twine. Now obviously it's thinner and it's a little bit more frayed but it kind of creates this really cute look when you tie it in a bow. Just this kind of edgy messy look. So see? So you have lots of possibilities with um, this twine. You can do lots of things with it. He's so cute, right? Okay, so we like to do, we like to add a little bit of bling to our cards. 
And so I think I showed you this um, on my Facebook Live maybe this past weekend. So this is how I like to store my embellishments. Not all of them, but my sequins for sure because I don't love the packaging that we get them in. And so I am just taking, I, what I've done is I've just taken them right out of the package and glued them down to a piece of Whisper White Fit cardstock. Okay, so I'm just, maybe I want that over here. What did I do with this one? You know what, I went a little bit too low on that one. So here we go, we're gonna put that there. And then I'm gonna take one more and put it down on the bottom here. So just a little um, a little hack, an organization hack to just put take them out of the package and put them on a piece of white cardstock. And I, I do find because of because I put them on here, I use them way more than I would. I don't know, maybe because it's on a big sheet now it sticks out every time I open the drawer that I keep my embellishments in but I use it far, far more. Okay. For 10 minutes. Yeah, I got a card done in 10 minutes, Denise. <laughs> and you know, you can always watch the replay if you'd like. Um, so yeah, this is the card. This is original. I did them exactly the same. So that is the layout. So I think I've given the measurements. I'm gonna show you another card using the exact same sketch, a totally different look, um, less cutesy, I would say more um well you'll see you can decide if you like it or not so i'm going to grab my stuff do you guys want to see the card first i know i've heard from people that you like to see the card and a few of you like the surprise so maybe i will okay spoiler alert i'm about to show the card and then you guys can look away if you don't want to see it okay hang on one second i'm seeing my camera mount in the way all right oh wait hold on Something has fallen off. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it was like a pretty important part of the card missing. Okay, so this is the card. This was inspired by a card I saw on, um, on Instagram by Cindy Schuster, who is actually, I think she's one of the concept artists for Stampin' Up! So she had done a similar um, card layout, sorry, card she picked similar colors for her card and I loved it so okay so here we go I'm going to start by let's see where's my bone folder gone okay so a little tip for you if you use a bone folder that has um, a Stampin' Up! logo on it or anything engraved on it when you're going to score your cardstock don't use this side to score it because it's going to like eventually the ink will wear off and it'll transfer onto your onto your cardstock. So use kind of closer to the pointy part, but I use my bone folder every single time I make a card because it just creates this really nice crease. So this is definitely something you want to add to your wish list. Let's start with some stamping. And first I'm actually gonna show you our new blending brushes, okay? So what I did wanna do was create just a little bit of a uh, blended background on this stitch circle so you can see I'm using these stitch shapes again I have a little bit of the magenta madness still on this but I'm gonna still go in with my petal pink and then you just want to dab a little bit of this off onto here and then you just go in really light gentle circular motions onto your cardstock you can always add ink but you can't take it away so that's why I dab it here first just to take a little bit off and it's just kind of creating this beautiful pink almost like a haze on that cardstock so I didn't want a, an actual petal pink circle I just wanted to create a little bit of shading on that circle the other thing that I want to do is just add a little bit of splatter so I'm just using my Night of Navy Stampin Blend oh I left it on display sorry <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> oh goodness well, I hope that you, this is gonna be a tiny bit different, okay? I'm adding this splatter, which I didn't do the first time. I'm really sorry about that, guys. I looked away for a second. So I'm just taking my Stampin' Blend and I'm just flipping, flicking the brush tip against the uh, cap, okay? And that just creates a little bit of splatter. And then I'm going to stamp, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just forget all about it, okay? Just forget you ever saw it. Okay, so now I'm taking the stamp that says, you are amazing. 
I am using the In Bloom stamp set, and can I just say, I love this stamp set. I wasn't, I will say when I first saw it in the um, catalog, it wasn't one of the ones that jumped out at me, but since I've been using it, I am falling more and more in love with it. I love the sentiment, so I love happy birthday, you really are the best. Um, congrats, you're so fancy now, I love that one. You are amazing, you mean so much to me. So I feel like this kind of covers so many um, different types of cards we might wanna send out. And then of course, anything with flowers always has me. So it has really beautiful flowers that you can stamp. So I'm doing a stamp camp this weekend and we're actually featuring this stamp set as um, half, like we're doing half of the projects with the In Bloom and um, they're just adorable. So I love this stamp set, but I really love this sentiment and the writing. So once again, I'm using a layering circle die and I'm just gonna put the white stitch circle onto a Knight of Navy scallop circle that's just a little bit larger. So you can see it just peeking out a little bit, okay? The layering is not necessary, especially because if you're using the stitched white circle, you've got that nice stitching border. I just like it for a bit of contrast. So again, we're going to use our designer series paper. Now this is one that I showed you in the celebration brochure. It's the Paper Blooms. I know Maureen, I'm, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm still laughing at myself. Um, and I even told you guys to look away and then I totally kept it there, my bad. Um, okay, so now I'm using the Paper Blooms, same dimensions as the last card that I did. And I am just going to put this down, and this time I'm using a basic white mat, okay? So just going to put that down. Because I want this card to be a little bit lighter, I could have gone with a Knight of Navy, but I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. And so at the bottom, I'm using the geometric pattern. I'm using the stripes because it would just be too, too much um, pattern competing if I went with another floral pattern at the bottom. So that's that, and then we're going to bring in our trusty Tombow liquid glue and put a little bit on each of these strips. So you don't wanna to go too close to the end because you're part, of the, um, part of it is going to be extending off the side of the card. So I'm just covering the seam here, and then I'm going to put one strip above and one below. <laughs> I'm glad I'm entertaining for you guys. Honestly, I will tell you that if this was my first first Facebook Live, I would be mortified. I used to be so much more nervous. I still do get nervous. Like it's not, you know, it's not an easy thing to come here and essentially I'm talking to myself even though I know you guys are talking to me, but I'm the only voice that I hear. And so, um, you know, I stumble and sometimes I lose things and sometimes I have word finding difficulties, but uh, I feel like I feel like this community I feel like you guys just um, you make me feel super comfortable and it makes me really happy to hang out with you guys I feel like the way I would if I was just talking to my my long you know long time friends so it's fun so I do apologize for that little blip okay so we've got our uh, base and our first few layers ready to go I'm just gonna stick this down and then I'm going to show you the dies. Aw, oh, thank you, Denise. You're so sweet, so kind. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you don't mind all this chatter, but um, I do upload these videos to YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, I really appreciate you watching and I'm grateful for you and I would love it if you would you know, like the video, of course, if you like what you see and subscribe and share and all those things, um, that would mean a lot to me. My boys think I'm actually cool because I have more than two subscribers on my YouTube channel now. Like they thought, what, like they're used to watching gamers on YouTube. So they watch Fortnite and Roblox and whatever other games they like to play. And so these YouTubers have like millions of followers. And so they kind of chuckled when they knew that I started a YouTube channel. But the other day we looked at it and I had over 60 subscribers and they were like, what mom, you're awesome. <laughs> so now they're trying to encourage me to get on TikTok, but there's not a chance. Okay. Can we take a moment to talk about these dyes? So I have to tell you, these dies, I will tell you actually a couple of things. The first one is that when you look at the celebration brochure, 
in the front of it uh, where it shows you the paper blooms designer series paper it actually says that it coordinates with pretty perennials bundle that's actually an error uh, pretty perennials is a different um, bundle and it doesn't it's beautiful but it doesn't coordinate with this this bundle actually coordinates with the in bloom bundle which also has the pierced blooms dies so i want to show you let's see if any of my papers here would have it um I don't think any of the paper, I don't think any of the flowers on here could be cut out with the dies, but these dies will actually cut out some of the flowers on the Paper Blooms Designer Series paper. So it's awesome because you don't even need to stamp anything. But I believe this pattern here with the, the dark Knight of Navy, you can see the flowers here in the shape of them. The This die, for example, would cut out that flower. So it's pretty awesome how nicely it coordinates with the Designer Series paper. Then, of course, you can cut these out yourself. Now. By the magic of television, I happen to have, if we do some like abracadabra, I already have my die cuts done. So I am going to take these out and we're going to assemble them. I figured many of you have seen me use the stamp and cut and emboss machine enough to know how it all works. And so I thought I would save you some time. Before I move on, I do want to show you, I love any die set that has a label die. And this one here has a really cool shape uh, label die with the stitching on the border. So anything that has stitching I will buy like I don't even think I think about it anymore I just love the stitched look and um, So I love these flowers. So let's put these together. Shall we? So I'll start with this little centerpiece here and I'm going to stick this on to the center of this larger flower so again the colors are just pulled from the designer series paper I actually really I just realized I used so see, this is going to be different than the one I showed you because I actually picked the wrong piece of DSP. I was actually planning to use a different pattern, but so it's going to look different. So see, <laughs> I didn't totally spoil it. Okay. So now I'm just taking these leaves. Can you just see the beautiful stitching? That's with one pass through this, the cut and emboss machine. So I didn't have to go in and pierce it to create that beautiful stitched veining these dies i don't think i will ever get rid of they're so so pretty and um we've created a lot with them so for my bingo on friday night and for stamp camp we've used a lot of these stitched blooms or pierced blooms i think they're called um okay so i think i am ready to start putting my card together second I did that on purpose yes I did all right so putting down some dimensionals here so see how uh, because I just added a little bit of that shading and then the speckled background it's not so stark on the card it just it kind of blends in a little bit more nicely it doesn't stand out too much um, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put a little dimensional here as a placeholder I want to first put my twine together. So I am using the Well Suited Twine Combo Pack and I'm using the Knight of Navy one, okay? So this one comes with Basic Gray and Knight of Navy. Apparently I wasn't the only one that was missing twine because Stampin' Up! came back with four different colors of twine in this catalog, which I'm super thrilled about and I hope that they never take them away. So, let me put that there. And then I'm actually going to just put a strip of adhesive on the back here. And I want to, I kind of want to hide, I want to hide the um, twine a little bit behind the flower. Okay, so I'm just pressing that down. So you can see it a little bit, but it's not kind of out in the open. It's, it's in the background. And then, because I've got that dimensional there, I'm going, no, hold on. We gotta peel that first. And I'm gonna put a little bit more adhesive right here so that it sticks really nicely to the card. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? Okay. And then I have these two tiny little flowers. These are actually from one die. So there's one die that cuts out two flowers so very very efficient just going to put a little dot of glue here 
Denise, what have you been using a lot? The twine? See, I, sh I really meant to use the, um, the white background for this paper, but I think this will still show up. So I use the little, I use Seaside Spray for these little flowers. Now tell me, do you guys feel like I need to embellish this card? Would you like to see, you know, maybe some little rhinestones in the middle of these flowers? Do you think it looks nice as it is? I'm gonna just tidy up my space a little bit and you can tell me if you think it needs some sparkle. Oh, thank you, Carol from Connecticut. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Oh my goodness, it's such a mess over here. Wow. Does it make your head spin to see all the stuff on my desk when I'm done? I feel like the clutter must make, you know, make somebody's head spin. Rhinestones on the small flowers. Okay, give me one second. All right, Carol. Here we go. So let me get my... We're going to do one with, and then you'll see the one without, and so you'll get to see both. So using the small rhinestones here. Ooh, good call. I like it. It's like they were calling for mini rhinestones here. Does it need another? I feel like it needs another because we, we're supposed to put embellishments in threes, right? Maybe one. No, oh, that's in a line then. Okay, that's where it's gonna go. Maybe I'll move it later. Okay, so what do you think? Did you like that? Do you like it with the rhinestones? Here's the original because now I've spoiled it for you guys. So this is the one different background, um, different pattern of the paper, but still same layout. And so I did the exact same dimensions on this card as I had done with the little donkey card. So same um, dimensions for the card base, and then same dimensions for the mat, three and three quarters by five, and then two pieces of designer series paper. I feel like these cards look totally different but look at how we've leveraged that same layout to be able to create two different cards. So you could take almost any stamp sets that you own and any papers and any die cuts or punch outs and do a similar layout and you've just got a really cute card, which I think has quite a few um, nice little elements to it. This one has more die cutting on it, but I just, anyway, I love the layout and um, loved how these cards turned out. So I hope you guys like them. And that's it for me. I'm gonna flip the camera again just so that I can see you all and say good night. And then I will see you again on Sunday. Just give me one second. Okay. Ooh, that's a little close, sorry. Okay, so thank you so much for everyone for joining. Um, to those that I may have missed saying hello to, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you guys liked the uh, projects. I will, like I said, post the measurements and all the information is in my description. If you haven't already joined my mailing list, there's a link there um, and hopefully you can find me on YouTube as well. And I hope that you stay in touch and um, I will be here Sunday morning for coffee in a cart. I might be a little tired because I have an event on Friday night and then I have my stamp camp on Saturday which is like a full day thing um, but I am still looking forward to being here I actually already have the card created um, for Sunday and I have to tell you it's a happy accident I maybe can't show you right now but I ended up having four pieces of cardstock sitting together on my desk that I just used them to cut for my stamp camp but to see the four cards four pieces of cardstock together created the most beautiful color combination so I'm going to be using that on Sunday morning for coffee and a card right here at 10 a.m. So please set your reminders and join me with your coffee and we'll do some more crafting together. Have a great rest of the week and a great weekend everyone and we will see you soon. Bye for now.